Welcome to Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Today is Saturday, June 19th, 2021. Let's take a look at today's prices for today. Uh, at BTC, number one, $35,786, down 4.37%. At number two, Ethereum, $2,235, down 2.16%. At number three, Tether, $1, just up 0.15%. Binance Coin, number four, $339.65, down 2.64%. At number five, Cardano, $1.42, down 2.3%. Dogecoin, at number six, 29 cents, down 2.05%. XRP at number seven, 79 cents, down 4.14%. USD Coin at number eight, $1, just up 0.09%. Polkadot at number nine, $21.01, $2.72% 2 down. And last but not least, Uniswap at number 10, $20.66, down 2.17%. Let's take a look at the crypto fear and greed index. Again, it's extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That could be a buying opportunity. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. So let's take a look. Today is extreme fear at number 23. And yesterday was also extreme fear at 25. Last week at this time, fear at 28. And last month, wow, extreme fear at number 11. So interesting enough. Let's take a look at some of the articles that we've chosen today. Uh, just for the contents, let's look at the titles. Criminals are sending malicious hardware wallets to steal people's crypto. Next article is VeChain and Litecoin. When is their next big move? Number three, the father of El Salvador's Bitcoin Beach received an anonymous donation of a cryptocurrency fortune. Now the local economy runs on it. Number four, Man invests $20 in obscure cryptocurrency, becomes trillionaire overnight. Number five, Bitcoin magic of the golden ratio to the rescue. And last but not least, the main topic is, I put my life savings in crypto, how a generation of amateurs got hooked on high-risk trading. All right, so let's take a look at article number one. Criminals are sending malicious hardware wallets to steal people's crypto. Ledger users report being sent fake USB devices designed to steal their cryptocurrency. So yeah, Ledger is a cold wallet that you can use to store your cryptocurrency. So let's take a look. In the world of cryptocurrency, your cryptographic keys control your coins. Some users seeking more security turn to offline hardware wallets to store their keys. Now, owners of Ledger hardware wallets are being sent fraudulent devices in a scam aimed at stealing their cryptocurrency. On Wednesday, Bleeping Computer spotted that a Reddit user going by JJ Rand posted that they received a random package claiming to be from the hardware wallet company containing a seemingly legit Ledger Nano X device. The official looking shrink wrap package also contained an installation manual that looks like it was created on Microsoft Word and a letter purportedly signed by Ledger CEO Pascal Gauthier telling the recipient to use it to replace their existing product due to a data breach. We now guarantee that this kind of breach will never happen again, the letter reads. As it turned out, however, the device wasn't from Ledger. It was all a ruse. Ledger customers have been targeted by a series of phishing campaigns after the company experienced a data breach last year. The company has started using its website to disclose ongoing phishing campaigns, including this recent one reported by JJ Rand, and to advise customers on how to avoid being scammed. JJ Rand posted about this phishing attempt, which they described as next level, as a warning to others on the R Ledger wallet subreddit. Nicholas Baca, Ledger co-founder, confirmed in a comment on Reddit that it was a fake device and advised them not to use it. This is at least the second time that a Ledger user was sent a fraudulent device as part of a scam based on Ledger's blog entries. According to Ledger's description of the most recent incident, 
the product was actually a tampered Ledger Nano X with a flash drive component attached to the circuit board. It contained a fake Ledger application that asked the user to input their 24 word recovery phrase, which would allow scammers to access and transfer the person's cryptocurrencies. This recovery phrase secures users' cryptocurrencies and should never be shared even with the company, according to Ledger. We need every crypto user to educate themselves about the blockchain and what it means to have great responsibilities and power, Benoit Pelezovin, Ledger Vice President of Marketing, told Motherboard. Phishing attempts against Ledger users have become so rampant recently that customers have taken to subreddits for advice or speculation regarding resellers, deliveries, and hardware authenticity. The R Ledger Wallet subreddit even features a bot that comments on posts about scams and notes that the subreddit is continuously targeted by scammers. Some posters have reported receiving private messages on Reddit containing suspicious links. Ledger announced a data breach in July 2020, where an unauthorized third party breached their e-commerce database, gaining access to customers' contact information, full names, and addresses. A blog post was published on the company's website describing the breach in detail and and claiming that clients' payment information in crypto was not compromised. In December, data from over 270,000 Ledger customers was published on the Raid Forms hacking form. Since then, Ledger has detailed every phishing campaign that has been reported to them on its website, ranging from malicious resellers on Amazon to scam emails and blackmail. According to Ledger's site, 392 phishing websites have been shut down since October 2020. Pelazovian explained that France-based Ledger does not work closely with the French authorities and law enforcement to investigate these phishing campaigns when they're brought to their attention. It's just the beginning, he told Motherboard. So yes, be careful, everyone. Criminals are sending malicious hardware wallets to steal people's crypto. Do you use a Ledger Nano X or any Ledger products? Comment down below. Let's look at the next article. It is VeChain and Litecoin. When is their next big move? So, barring a handful of massive downslides, altcoins have had a pretty decent run so far in 2021. A few coins like Matic and ADA were quick to recover, while the rest, including VET and LTC, have elongated their consolidation phases and continue to witness highs and lows without showing signs of settlement. Nevertheless, here's what you can expect from these two alts in the next few weeks. Litecoin. So from the beginning of this year, Litecoin has been trading within its ascending channel. Since the last latest price decline, its corrective rally has continued to consolidate as evidenced by the attached chart. Nonetheless, a breakout at this point seems to be highly unlikely. Commenting on similar lines, US-based technical analyst Justin Bennett recently commented, quote, the Litecoin chart is days away from breaking out. End quote. For the breakout to actually take place, Litecoin's trading volume needs to drastically rise. Only when that happens, it would become evident that the traders are interested in the breakout level. However, Litecoin has no hopes for the same. For instance, on 8 June, LTC's four hour transaction volume went as high as 21.6 million, while the same dropped nearly 1.53 million in just four hours on 16 June. Additionally, at this point, it should be noted that most of LTC's on-chain metrics aren't quite impressive either. Nonetheless, if not now, the breakout is set to happen in the foreseeable future. Whenever it happens, it would be interesting to see which way it does because it could potentially serve as an indicator for the rest of the market. Again, this doesn't mean that Litecoin will lead the market rally. It would merely help in determining the general market sentiment. So keeping the height of the symmetrical triangle in mind, a potential move on $100 can be expected in whichever direction it breaks out, the analyst further added. Quote, a break lower would target $65, while a break higher would open up $275. Keep a close eye on Litecoin. What's more, the number of whale transactions has also seen a dramatic drop 
from registering 1,424 transactions in just four hours on 7 May, the number dropped nearly 126 on 16 June. Additionally, as another recent analysis pointed out, Litecoin's bearishness has been rising in the long term. Even as it continues to consolidate and vertically accumulate, LTC might continue trading in the 156 to 183 back bracket. Nevertheless, at press time, the 12th largest coin was trading at $171.35 level. VeChain, VET. At press time, VET's chart did not look very impressive. In fact, according to Bennett, buyers still have a lot of work to do. The VET market was continuing to hover above its 0 0.1020 cent support on weak volume. A close below that area would expose the coin to 8 eight cents since the beginning of June, VET's price has consistently been dropping. However, the same movement remains well within the uptrend range when viewed with a long-term lens. Again, as CMC's data points out, the alts volume has also trailed off during this consolidation, pointing out the key levels to keep a note of, Bennett asked. Quote, if we do see the market surge higher from here, keep an eye on 0 0.155 cents. That's the next key resistance level for VET, followed by 0 0.175 cents, end quote. The 21st largest crypto was trading at 0 0.109 cents at press time, having registered a 0.45% uptick in the last 24 hours. The analyst concluded by stating, quote, the next big move isn't far away. So. What are you? Are you bullish on chain and Litecoin, V chain to be exact, or are you bearish? What do you think? Comment down below. All right. Article number three is father of El Salvador's Bitcoin Beach received an anonymous donation of a cryptocurrency fortune. Now the local local economy runs on it. So, 47-year-old Michael Peterson fell in love with El Zante, a Pacific Coast beach in El Salvador, 17 years ago when he visited for a surfing trip. The town grew on him, and he and his family started splitting their time between their home in California and El Salvador, where they supported missionary groups and small development projects through their evangelical Christian church. That church put him into an unlikely scenario that transformed El Zonte into Bitcoin Beach and made Peterson its father figure. A June 16 Bloomberg Businessweek article titled Bitcoin Beach, What Happened When an El Salvador Surf Town Went Full Crypto documented how Peterson helped convert El Zonte's payments to cryptocurrency. Now, nearly all of the town's households and four dozen local businesses use Bitcoin. It's crazy how fast Bitcoin has caught on, Peterson told Bloomberg reporter Ezra Fieser. Peterson did not immediately respond to insiders' request for commentary on the story. The concept came about 2019 when an anonymous Californian offered to donate his Bitcoin fortune to El Zonte to create a local economy run on the cryptocurrency. Peterson was introduced to the donor, who remains unknown, through church. At first, Peterson thought it sounded like a scam, Bloomberg said, but then he thought of transforming El Zonte made him rethink. It allows everybody from the poorest to the richest to participate on the same playing field, he told Bloomberg. So, adopting magic internet money, already having a long-standing relationship with the community, helped Peterson get locals to adopt the idea, he said in a Coindesk podcast in June 11. When I told them, hey, we're going to start using this magic internet money and we're going to get stores to accept it. We're going to get people to start taking their salaries in it. They just kind of looked at me like, oh, Mike, he said on a podcast. The experiment really took off when El Salvador's tourism industry struggled amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Peterson gave hundreds of local families about $35 in Bitcoin each month through an app created for small crypto transactions. El Zante stores wanted in on the currency, so Peterson launched the Bitcoin Beach wallet in September. Now, Bitcoin has become the norm. Thanks in part to the El Zante experiment, El Salvador became the first country in the world to adopt Bitcoin as a currency. It then asked the World Bank for help implementing the cryptocurrency as a legal tender, but was swiftly rejected. Because of the crazy amount of interest, 
since the currency was legally adopted, Peterson is planning on helping other towns across the country mimic the El Zante experiment. For a lot of these people, this is the first time they felt hope that they can build a future in El Salvador, that they're not going to have to follow the path of their parents to sneak into the U.S. illegally and work in some dead-end job. They can build a business based on Bitcoin, Peterson said on the Coindesk podcast. It really opens up the world to them. So yes, the father of El Salvador's Bitcoin Beach received an anonymous donation of a cryptocurrency fortune. Now the local economy runs on it. What do you think about this story? Do you think it was a you know, heartfelt type of story or do you think it was just one in a diamond rough? Why don't you comment down below? All right, moving on, uh, before we go to the next article, I'd like to just take this time to say thank you to all my subscribers and listeners. I know it's been a really long ride. We've on to the 11th episode, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that's commented and given me feedback over the past week. I know this is a new channel, so I'm getting all the feedback and all the recommendations, the advice, and I want to make this channel this podcast the best that we can make so please come along with this journey help me by supporting liking subscribing sharing and try to finish this podcast this video all the way to the end so that the algorithms can take part into it all right thank you so much let's move on article number four man invest twenty dollars in obscure cryptocurrency becomes trillionaire overnight Wow. So when Chris Williamson put $20 in cryptocurrency Rocket Bunny, he didn't expect to become a trillionaire overnight. The Georgia nursing school student had dabbled in cryptocurrencies for around eight months and invested in the currency on Monday. On Tuesday, its value had soared to more than $1.4 trillion. I woke up, it's like 9 a.m. and I always check my phone to check how my crypto, to see how it's going and how it's doing. And I looked at it and I'm like waking up and I'm just like, nah, I'm sleeping. Williamson told Fox 5 Atlanta. The student from Manchester, Georgia, then rushed onto Coinbase cryptocurrency trading app, barely believing what he was seeing. Williamson said that when he tried to move the currency into another wallet to withdraw, it wasn't showing the same price. So he contacted Coinbase. Coinbase replied with a short answer saying it was looking into the issue and tried to contact Rocket Bunny, but never heard anything back. So that's when I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have fun with it at this point. So I went to Twitter, Williams told the news network, you know, when you look at it, it's like, you know, there's no way I'm ever going to get this amount of money, he said. Williamson was expecting the large sum of money to quickly disappear from his account. But instead, it grew. He determined that he bought into the correct online coin and that it wasn't a scam. The Georgia student even tweeted billionaire Elon Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX CEO who frequently posts to social media about cryptocurrencies, hoping he could provide him advice about his newfound fortune. I thought for sure because he trolls people all the time, Williamson said. I hope he's actually saw it and maybe he's been following it, but I don't know. That is an Elon Musk wallet. The student said if he had any had this kind of money, he would use it to help people by taking care of his family, paying off his sister's homes, and maybe start free medical clinics. That's a lot of money that I could never spend in a lifetime, so I would do good with it, Williamson said. Williamson's account has been frozen by Coinbase, so he cannot withdraw, purchase, or trade until he hears back from the company. Newsweek has contacted Coinbase or comment. Although the incident has provided him with a good story, Williamson believes that he amassed this 13-figure wealth through a glitch. His friend, who lives in Jasper, Georgia, bought the exact same coin but didn't experience any issues. However, Williamson found others on an online message board that have had problems with it. So what do you think about this story? Do you think he's going to get that money? Trillionaire? I'm not too sure. But I don't know whose fault is it. Is it Coinbase? Is it Rocket Bunny? Or do you think it was just a glitch? Comment down below what you think is going to happen. All right. Let's move on to the next article. It is Bitcoin magic of the golden ratio to the rescue. So it has been more than a month now in Bitcoin, the world's largest crypto has remained in the lower 30K 
to the mid 40K price band. This range is set to be Bitcoin's new home for the next few weeks. Additionally, as our recent analysis pointed out, the crypto's asset price is set to further consolidate under the $41,500 resistance level. An upward rally or an uptrend is something that Bitcoin has never seen over the past few days amidst the death cross narrative doing the rounds and aforementioned phrases have sort of become alienated to the community now. Nevertheless, there is something to cheer about. The magic of the golden ratio. Let's take a look. A pseudonymous analyst, analyst recently highlighted that after every downtrend encapsulated within the red region, whenever Bitcoin's price has shown signs of recovery, it has broken past the 1.0 Fibonacci level, light green line. Next, its price has only surged beyond 1.618 or the golden ratio, dark green line. The market has then always used the same level as support to further continue its uptrend. What's more, after retesting the aforementioned level, the crypto has always gone to touch its genuine cycle top, commenting on similar lines analysts added. Quote, every cycle, Bitcoin recovers from its previous bear market, then exceeds a recovery by 61.8% on the downside market at 1.618%. The analyst went on to add, quote, every cycle after exceeding above the 1.618, BTC has tested this level of support before surging. Bitcoin's price for now is yet to successfully sustain a breach of the 40K level. At press time, BTC had fallen by over 4% in 24 hours, with the crypto valued at 35638 Interestingly, all the previous sell-offs have eventually pushed Bitcoin towards the golden ratio, and the price has been subject to its magic. Looking at the prevailing market scenario, Bitcoin has already breached the 1.618 level, as indicated by the chart. Looking at past precedents and keeping the cyclical nature of Bitcoin in mind, the odds of an uptrend from this level seem to be quite likely. All in all, the golden ratio might act as Bitcoin's bottom before the next uptrend begins. Well, even though it's an uptrend is on the cards, there is no surety of when it will exactly happen. However, the analyst went on to contend, quote, the Bitcoin year of the bull is not over. Much more to come, and the price will go much higher. So what do you think? Bitcoin's magic of the golden ratio to the rescue? Do you analyze the charts like this guy does? Or do you just go with your heart? Comment down below. All right, boys and girls, we're going to look at our last article for today. And it's a big one. It's called, I put my life savings in crypto. How a generation of amateurs got hooked on high risk trading. So online trading apps are drawing in novice investors willing to risk everything on volatile stocks. Do they really know what they're doing? Let's take a look. Noor is whispering so her boyfriend won't hear her. The 30-something designer from London is down about 14,000 pounds as a result of her decision to get into investing, in addition to another 8,000 pounds profit she made on Bitcoin last year, but then lost. Nobody knows the full extent of Noor's losses, hence the whispering. I feel so stupid, she says. I can't talk about it to my friends. I can't talk about it to my boyfriend. Noor is not her real name. So it started in November 2020, around the time of the U.S. presidential election. People expected Trump to win again, she says. And it was a weird time because it was mid-pandemic, and it just seemed like this financial moment might be happening. She started reading about cryptocurrencies online. And the more she read, the more ads for trading platforms she was served on her social media feeds because of COVID, Noor hadn't spent much money over the year. So she bought 10,000 pounds worth of the cryptocurrency Bitcoin online, which turned into 18,700 pounds within weeks. I never invested before, she tells me. She'd sleep with her phone under her pillow and wake up during the night to check the performance of her Bitcoin. Unlike listed stocks, Bitcoin can be traded 24 hours a day. It was cooking my brain, she says. I look at it constantly as she talked about it to her boyfriend and how well her investment was doing. I'd be telling him, look, I just made $400 in a day, she says. 
Noor started to fantasize about a future in which she never need a mortgage, whether she'd invest her way into extreme wealth. Flushed with success, she pulled her money out of Bitcoin, downloaded the brokerage app Trading212, and started investing in other cryptocurrencies and stocks. Ripple, a cryptocurrency and platform companies that invest in the legal cannabis industry, psilocybin, research brands, Beyond Meat, makers of plant-based meat subsidies, BioNTech, a German biotechnology company, business developing gene editing technology and psychedelic medicine, and gold and silver. Noor would wake up and watch the YouTube channel FX Evolution, where a headphone-wearing Australian trader through the talks through the stock market's activity for hours on end. While amateur investors Sally trade tips in the comments, she joined an investing group on the ultra-private messenger app Discord. It was a social thing, Noor says. Being in that group was the highlight of my day. She frequented the Reddit forum Wall Street Bets, which shared tips, and in January, infamously drove up the stock price of GameStop, an ailing bricks and mortar video game chain, and spent more time on Twitter which has a huge investing community. By now, her entire news feed was about cryptocurrencies and stocks. Quote, people talk about their crypto wallets. I ask, what does that coin do? They say, we don't know. It's just done really well. She learned the language of the online meme stock movement, the community of amateur investors that coalesces on social media platforms to discuss their options while swapping memes. To the moon, followed by a rocket emoji, means a stock will go up. Diamond hands means continuing to hold a stock despite market volatility, while tendies is the profit made from an investment. I started talking like an ape, she says. Ape is an internet slang for a bullish retail investor. She couldn't read a book because she'd have to check her portfolio every half hour. My right hand was constantly cold from touching my phone, she says. My boyfriend called it my Wall Street hand. Pretty quickly, everything began to fall apart. First, Ripple crashed. Then, in February, Noor got into GameStop mania too late and lost even more money. It was the worst time, she says. I couldn't eat. I was just constantly looking at my phone. She spent even more time online looking for stock recommendations as a way of clawing back some of the money she'd lost or else buying what other people were investing in on the popular trading apps. By now, she stopped bragging about her investments to her boyfriend. She was too embarrassed. Part of the problem was that Noor is not a natural investor. I have no patience, and that's a disaster, she says. The bigger issue was that she had no idea what she was doing. Although she could use financial jargon fluently, she didn't really understand what it meant. She watched the film The Big Short, but couldn't explain what shorting was. She bought stock depending on internet hype or she was feeling on that day. At the time we spoke, Noor had lost her £10,000 initial investment, the 8000 she made on Bitcoin, and another 5000 on top of that. Does she view this as speculation or investing? After a pause, she finally says, I see it as gambling. And yet Noor still thinks she can claw her way out. Now I think I can invest, she says, but I don't know. It costs me a lot of money. I mean, if I can get some back, maybe I can find a good place to get out. She sounds desperate, at once self-aware and blindingly deluded. She sounds, in other words, like a roulette player on a losing streak. So this is the year ordinary people discovered financial markets. Through a heady combination of lockdown-induced ennui, generous economic stimulus packages on social media, memes, making reference to investing your steamy or stymy check, and the GameStop run. There's never been so much amateur money sloshing around stock markets, nor such interest in arcane and impenetrable financial jargon. If it feels as if everyone is talking about their stock options and crypto wallets, it's because they are. And at Vanguard of this new online-centered investment community are young people, women, and minority groups. A recent Financial Conduct Authority Commission report found that women, the under 40s, and people from a Black, Asian, and minority ethnic background are driving this DIY movement, investing in high-risk products such as cryptocurrencies, foreign exchange trading, and contracts for difference. 
a type of investing where individuals bet on whether a security will go up or down between the opening and closing trades of the day. Contracts for difference are banned under U.S. securities law. Noor blundered into CFD trading as she blundered into everything else. So these new investors, the report found, used social media for tips, were overconfident, invested for short-term thrills rather than long-term gain, and often did not understand the hazards. The regulator was so concerned by the entrance of these retail investors to the cryptocurrency market in particular that it issued a warning in January this year, telling people that if they invested in cryptocurrencies, they should be prepared to lose all their money. It's always encouraging to see younger investors enter the market and gain valuable experience, says Susanna Streeter of retail investment platform Hargreaves Lansdowne. But there is a concern that the collision between social media influencers and the ease of use, which many people can use trading apps, is causing newbie investors to take short-term speculative decisions rather than linking their investments to a long-term plan. She tells me that Hargreaves Lansdowne has noticed growth of 57% in the use of their investing app in the last six months of 2020, compared with the same period in 2019. According to market research firm Mintel, 11% of Generation Z and 13% of millennials say that investing in stocks and shares will be a priority after the COVID-19 pandemic ends, compared with just 4% of Generation X and 3% of baby boomers. Cryptocurrencies and online investment platforms have become pop culture touchstones as well as financial products and services, says Mintel's Rich Shepherd. This and the digital first nature of these products means they are particularly appealing to tech-savvy young consumers. The rise of easy-to-use apps such as Trading212 or eToro has removed the barriers to entry. But much of this investing is ill-informed. I hear people talking about their crypto wallets, Streeter tells me. I question them and say, what does that coin do? What blockchain is it built on? What is its use case? They say, we don't know. It's just done really well. So when I speak to Shane Blake, 26, a digital marketing worker from Brighton, he's in a low mood. I'm feeling a bit flat after what Elon did, he says with a deep sigh. He knows how to take money straight out of my pocket. It's not nice waking up and checking your balance and realizing you've just lost 3,000 pounds. He is referring to a social media post from the tech CEO in which he stated that Tesla would no longer take Bitcoin for, bit for payments due to a high level of fossil fuels involved with cryptocurrency transactions. The amount of electricity used has the same carbon footprint as Argentina. With that message, Elon Musk wiped 7,000 pounds off the price of Bitcoin. Quote, anyone with brains to put money into the stock market knows the risk. And if you don't, that's your fault. So Blake started investing in Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency Ethereum in January. A friend showed me how much money he made on Bitcoin. He says, when you see that, you go for it. I put my life savings in. Like all the young people I speak to, Blake is anxious to impress me with his fluidity in cryptocurrency jargon. He insists that he knows what he is doing and picks his investments carefully. I am a holder of Ethereum because I believe in the project and the fundamentals, he says. Blake asked me not to disclose the value of his holdings because crypto can make you a target. For hackers, he will only tell me that he has done more than 5,000 pounds in investments. I hold a good number of coins, he says modestly. And so far, it's going well. I'm guaranteed to make about 1,500 pounds a week indefinitely, Blake says with confidence. It's just overwhelming because I've never had that much money in my life. The week after we speak, the global cryptocurrency market crashes, driven in part by a crackdown on Bitcoin from Chinese regulators. So where do these young people go when they want advice on their investments? Social media, of course. TikTok is full of fast-talking finance gurus squinting at trading charts while rattling off jargon. Amateur investors coalesce around YouTube communities or pay to enter private Discord groups where signals on which stocks they should invest in are traded. Virtually none of these communities or content creators adheres to FCA guidance around the giving of financial advice. 
There are a lot of fools on a lot of apps talking nonsense, says Poku Banks, age 20. The University of Nottingham student has 327,000 followers in TikTok, where he shares videos about entrepreneurship, affiliate marketing, and investing. Banks is always careful to emphasize in his videos that he is not a qualified financial advisor and urges people to do their research before investing. My main ambition is to get personal finance taught in schools, he says. That's why I started making content online. Banks sees his generation mania for financial investing as partly COVID-induced. When the lockdown hit, it taught people that their jobs aren't safe, that you need to develop a source of income. So lockdown accelerated people starting side hustles because they were bored. Plus, crypto has been booming. People are seeing crazy returns. He is scathing about the bad actors that proliferate in the space. There are people pushing courses that are just regurgitated information from the internet or showing off a flashy lifestyle just to get the views. On social media, Forex traders pose in front of luxury cars, holding thick wads of cash, or with arms of full of designer shopping bags, advertising courses that promise to teach their followers the skills to become fabulously rich, like them. Often, these influencers are reality TV regulars, celebrity Big Brother winner Stephen Bear and Jordy Shore, regular Chloe Ferry have both promoted Forex trading courses. So yes, part of the problem is that it's enormously difficult for the average amateur retailer investor to discern which creators are well-intentioned and knowledgeable and which are scammers, pump and dump schemes, where investing gurus purchase worthless stock in advance and then encourage their unwitting followers to invest in it to drive the price up are commonplace. Meanwhile, many of the self-styled gurus make their money by selling courses rather than investing in the market. I'm not concerned about anybody because I think it's their own choice. And if you want to be an idiot with your money, I mean, I believe that anyone with brains to put money into the stock market knows the risk. And if you don't, that's your fault, says Stock Lizard King, an online investment guru with 125,000 Twitter followers and a private paid for Discord group with 22,000 members. The 25-year-old trader from Boston, Massachusetts, declines to give me his real name. Through his community, he encourages people to play the game as best as you can so you're not financially trapped for your, your entire life. However, he does not have any qualifications to give financial advice. So having studied marketing at college, there is risk and they have to be aware of it, he says of his community. You can't just go dumping your life savings into a stock and hope you're going to be filthy rich at the end of it. It takes a lot of skill. So, although it may seem counterintuitive, what is driving so many young people to embrace the volatility of cryptocurrency and stock markets is the same force that makes their lives feel uncontrollable and chaotic. When your future feels inherently uncertain and unpredictable, with global financial systems rigged against you and stability, home ownership, and the promise of upward social mobility, a gift only earlier generations had within their reach, why not embrace risk? It's so hard to prepare for the future now, Blake says. It's never been more difficult. The competition is out there. Everyone has a degree, so degrees are meaningless. It's so difficult to buy a house, the Lizard King views, higher education in general, as a scam. I feel screwed by the college system, he says. I graduated, but this whole system is set up to keep you trapped with student debt and credit card debt. There is another factor un underpinning this speculative interest in cryptocurrency markets. We live in a society where monetary recompense has become increasingly disconnected from our labor. Freelancers in the gig economy work 16-hour days without benefits, while the 1% accrue ever vaster riches. According to the Resolution Foundation, it would take more than 400 years for the median household in the UK to save enough disposable income to reach the average wealth of the richest 1% of the population. So, people from Black, Asian, and minority backgrounds, the most likely people to invest in risky financial products 
on average earn less than their white peers, are less likely to own their homes, and more likely to get into debt. It's not hard to see why people from these communities might be more attracted to investing when the odds of getting a well-paid job and purchasing a property are so stacked against them. Meanwhile, social media has swung the doors open on the lifestyles of the super rich. The new wave of uber high profile social media influencers, such as TikTok's Charlie D'Amelio and YouTube's Jake Paul, have spoken about buying cryptocurrency. Influencer culture pushed people, Blake says. People show off their lives and wealth on socials, and that spurs everyone on. Although he is critical of some aspects of this get rich room movement, banks in general approve of it. I do push hustle culture, he says. I'm not going to lie. I want to be rich. So, just as social media creates a new aspirational mar- mindset, pushing young people to accrue wealth, it also fuels risky investment decisions. As these amateur investors see tweets about a stock going to the moon and jump aboard, it's about FOMO. Fear of missing out, Streeter says. Some people like the emotion of that roller coaster ride, and if it's money that people can afford to lose, it's up to them. But the danger is when people are doing it with money they can't afford. FOMO is built into the very structure of the investing apps, which provide forms where users can swap stock tips on eToro. Stocks flash green and red like the lights of a Christmas tree. Depending on how they are performing, as they would in a physical stock exchange, the user experience of the apps makes you think, "Okay, everyone is buying this, so I should buy this." Noor says, "This fuels riskier, emotion-driven investment decisions," according to Streeter. The more established investment platforms like ours don't provide chat communities, which can fuel short-term trading behavior. The gamification of the major investing apps and platforms also drives gambling-like behavior. What we've seen in the last few years is the blurring or blurring of the lines between gaming, gambling, and investing, says Matt Zerb, cousin of the campaign for fair gambling. Conventional gambling is more accessible than ever through smartphones, and there's a blurred line between that and a gamified version of investing through these new platforms that have made it extremely easy to get involved in things like day trading. Robinhood, one of the most popular trading apps, is currently facing a lawsuit in Massachusetts. The securities regular alleges that the platform encourages inexperienced traders to make risky purchases by gamifying the experience, sending customers emoji-filled messages that influence them to buy shares, as well as highlighting trending products in a way that encourages a FOMO mindset. Quote, people brag about making money, but you never hear when people start losing money because of the guilt and the shame. Blake has seen his friends get sucked into day trading, a high-risk form of investing where people try to make money by buying and selling a financial instrument as its price varies multiple times during a day, hoping to make a minuscule profit on each trade. I don't day trade, he says. It's really addictive. It makes people form effective gambling habits. I've seen friends who feel unable to do things because they can't get away from their charts. Tony Marini is a therapist at Castle Craig Addiction Rehabilitation Center in Pebbleshire, Scotland. Three years ago, the clinic began accepting people with cryptocurrency addictions. Since then, Marini has treated about 30 clients, mostly young men, for addiction to cryptocurrency trading in particular. It starts out as a sociable thing, Mark Tini says. People brag about making money with their friends, but you never hear when people start losing money because of the guilt and the shame. Marina recently treated a man who lost 1.5 million pounds on cryptocurrencies that he embezzled from his company. Another former patient lost nearly 2 million pounds. I know crypto guys whose partners try to make their phones away from them, and they start shaking. He says it's withdrawal. They cannot not have their phones in front of them. The volatility of cryptocurrencies fuels addictive behavior in a way that regular stock market trading does not. Because it goes up and down so much, it releases endorphins and acts as an emotional trigger, Marini says. When investors' cryptocurrencies are doing well, they get into what Marini's term says a winning stage. 
the fantasy start. I'll pay off my mortgage, buy a bigger house, be able to help my family and friends. Often, they invest more money getting into debt. Then they start losing money, he says. The isolation starts. They start lying. They can't stop gambling. So they borrow more or do something illegal. They stop paying household bills. They get feelings of guilt, shame, and resentment. They start blaming other people or panicking. He is describing almost to a T Noor's predicament. So I think about Noor often in the weeks after we speak. To my relief, when I check back in six weeks after our first chat, she's in a better place. On one most of it back, Noor says, she is still 6,500 pounds in debt, but has managed to stem further losses. But she's whispering again. Her boyfriend still doesn't know. We're meant to be saving for a house, Noor explains. She managed to find her way out of her hole by investing in gold, silver, and pharmaceuticals and cutting out of the cryptocurrency market entirely. She is sanguine about the white knuckle experience. I'm not angry, she says. It's my fault. But Noor does blame the investing apps for sucking her in. I'm not going to use these digital products anymore. The interest rates are super hidden, and if you keep the notifications on, you are basically their slave. She quit the YouTube community too, after becoming dispirited with the expertise of the trader she was following. He always said, I know what I'm talking about, but then he told me to buy more gold, which crashed. Noor's plan is to hold her existing portfolio for a long term and long time, invest in companies she believes in, and stop checking her investments constantly. In other words, she has become an investor, not a speculator. I don't think I've cracked it, she says. I don't think anyone can crack it. But the most and the worst thing I ever did was listen to other people who claim they cracked it. So for every Noor quitting the gold rush in favor of slower and steadier gains, there are countless young people hoping to cut out of the rat race dreary job and milestone student debt by getting rich on the stock market. The roulette wheel spins, the notification ping, and the clock ticks past amateur hour and the retail investors rush in. So yes, please remember more and more people. I put my life savings in crypto, how a generation of amateurs got hooked on high risk trading. This article should be a reminder to everyone, don't put as money that you are that you can't you can't be willing to lose, right? So just remember that um, whatever you're gonna invest in quotes, right? If you're a speculator or if you're an investor, just make sure that that money you can say goodbye to it and you won't feel any remorse because you never know. And for me, that's the, the way I see it. I invest with the money that I know that I feel comfortable with losing, right? Don't go beyond that because you're just going to go into a big, vicious cycle. All right. So with that said, let's just take a look at the prices as of right now. Again, at number one, we got BTC at 35797 Ethereum at number two, $2,233. Tether at number three, $1. Binance Coin at number four, $338.78. Cardano at number five, $1.42. Dogecoin number six, $0.29. Cents. XRP number seven, $0.79. Cents. USD Coin number eight, $1. Polkadot number nine, $21. And last but not least, Uniswap at number 10, $20.49. So there you have it. Thanks again for tuning in to Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Just want to say thank you to everyone that's made it this far. Um, again, please like, subscribe, and share to help this channel grow bigger and bigger. Uh, please come and listen to me on all the podcasts, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and so on. Um, again please go ahead and give me any love or support. I just want to say thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good crypto day. Peace.